So, uh, hi everybody. On today's Ryersonian newscast, we're sitting down and talking with Robin Doolittle, Ryerson graduate and also the author of the newly published Crazy Town, the Rob Ford story. So, uh, I guess we'll just kick things off and jump into the questions here. Um, first, I want to ask you, what was the process like writing in such a short period of time, especially when there were constant developments in the Rob Ford saga? Yeah, that was the trickiest part for sure. I had 91 days to write 90,000 words. So you can do the math. That was about 1,000 words a day, which really means you're writing more like 3,000 words a day and pairing back. And then there was so much research to do at the same time. But I just sort of stuck a schedule and stuck to it. And I didn't wash my hair for three months. And uh, I submitted my first draft a week before the chief announced that the police had recovered the so-called crack video. And then I added a little bit and yeah, it got done. So that's the important thing. <laughs> okay, um, what do you know now that you wish you had been able to include in your manuscript? Honestly, I can say nothing. Um, I think that uh, this is, some people have said, you know, how do you write a book when the story's not done yet? The point of the, the book is that this is not going to be done. This is a family that fancies themselves a political dynasty. Um, whether Rob Ford wins the election or not, he's not gonna go anywhere, he has, made no secret of the fact his ambitions go as high as the Prime Minister's office. His brother is going to run provincially, he keeps saying. Um, he'd like to be Premier one day, possibly. Uh, the Fords have already promised that another member of the Ford family will be running in the City Council seat in Ward 2. So this is a story that's, that's ongoing, and, and I've told a, a piece of that puzzle. Okay. Uh, some of your sources had a lot to lose, uh, or reasons to be, um, for reasons to be connected um, to speaking to you. So how do you really go about convincing someone to talk? It takes a long time. Um, some of my sources took years to develop. Um, some, you can honestly make the case of just saying this is a, particularly when it came to staff sources, um, this is an important story that needs to be told. Um, this is unlike anything that's ever happened before. And I think there was there was a real unrest in, in some quarters. People believed in this guy, and and they're they're worried about him, and worried he's going to die, and that was motivation for some people to to say if, if maybe if this gets out, he will be pressured into getting help. Okay, as some of the information about the Ford family hadn't been previously written about in the Star or elsewhere, so I'm wondering, did you have to sort of negotiate about what would be reserved for your book? Yeah, that was a really tricky thing. I mean, um, so I went on book leave in July, and through that summer, sometimes I'd come across information that was relevant to the news that was happening, so related to the police investigation of, of the mayor or something about his whereabouts at the time, and I always passed that information on to the star. Um, in terms of some of the bigger revelations that the star, um, I, I did give the star a heads up about it beforehand. But then once I, once I was on book leave and doing research for the book, um, I mean, I was being paid, I, I, I got an, a book advance to write it because you're on unpaid leave from, from work. So that information was obviously uh, Penguins. The star has been incredibly supportive all through this, this process. What was your reaction when you uh, were asked to be on the Seth Meyers show? Um, I guess it kind of comes in two phases, the same as The Daily Show, is I get, I get booked and then I'm kind of like, we'll just see if this happens. Because, you know, things can always bump you. So, um, no, I found out yesterday that they'd announced it officially and that uh, Kanye West is going to be the guest. And that, I don't know, it's just a weird moment. I like texted my friends. I'm like, this is, this is getting out of hand. And uh, looking back at your time in J school, uh, did you ever imagine you would gain this much attention and almost become like a household name in Canada? <laughs> I don't know if I'm a household name in Canada, <laughs> but um, no, I don't know. I didn't really think about it. <laughs> okay, and um, after this media wave passes, what is next in your career? I don't know. <laughs> okay. um, I'd like to cover the election, and then after that, I have no idea. Do you ever foresee a sequel? People have been asking me that. Um, I'm not, I think if I went to a sequel, it would be, I guess, like what Doug Ford does with his career. Like, I'm really interested in the idea of him going into provincial politics. But I think, um, I don't know, we'll see what happens. But to me, the, the thing that I'm interested in is more of the political climate and the situation happening in Toronto that's created this um, circus, for lack of a better word. Uh, that's something I'd be interested in exploring. Okay, well, great. That's all the questions we had for you today. So on behalf of everyone at the Rarisonian, we want to thank you for coming in and talking with us. Thanks for having me.